What's up everyone? Dem boys back at it. This is going to be our West Coast Tour Pro Tips. I'm going to give you all like four new plays. We're going to talk a bit about abilities. Down the stretch my big goal here is to focus a little bit more on abilities and understanding how to properly use them. So we have that foundation built for next year when they add a bunch of abilities. We do not want to be learning this stuff still when we need to be up here. So make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that bell. I have sold my salary cap teams, uh, and I'm putting together just one good squad so I can kind of explore that stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about blocking thresholds. We're going to talk about, obviously, off offensive line abilities, right? Uh, and then also just kind of talk about how to maybe be able to leave receivers in on certain run types, uh, certain formations, just how you want to do that in the most effective way possible. So again, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get right into it. All right, everyone. So let's first just talk about the new plays and just what I've learned running this. We talked a bit about my play call data. Uh, this I-form closed slot is still by far my favorite. Uh, and I want you guys to see why. This halfback stretch. Since I've had Bo, I am averaging 11 yards a carry, man. Look at that. I am averaging 11 yards a pop running that stretch that ain't right that ain't right <laughs> no real risk either so this is still my favorite formation uh, first we're actually going to talk about some new motions within that and ending it into entirely new plays uh, but hb blast doesn't really matter what they're playing uh, this is the type of, of motion that i like to use if the user's doing a really good job keying in flying around this creates kind of a like a, a zone option blocking scheme almost. Uh, so we're going to move Gallup across. You do want to let him set. You don't want to motion snap this or it won't quite work right. And then what we're going to do is, is we're just going to really kind of watch the user and just watch the blocking and how it sets up. What will typically happen is there's enough kind of gaps to where the user is going to have to pause. More often than not, you'll end up going right, but not always uh, you know there's a lot of options so i'll show you what i mean so we're going to go back and look at the replay uh, just so you can see the way the blocking would set up obviously they shed it i still got some decent yards there but you can imagine what that hole would have looked like without that shed so you know i could go ahead and, and hit this gap over here i'd have one defender maybe to make miss but he's running wide right so i could follow 49 and i could hit that hole maybe the user sees that and goes over there well then i can go backside now again we got better blockers out there they don't shut on us let's say witten holds that block well i could run through that gap I could have even come out wide if you have joystick. A lot of times what I'll do is kind of come out wide and then S-curve, try to S-curve back in and burn, you know, the next defender and then pop back out. Uh, but you can see how if, you know, if Witten doesn't blow his block, how much space you're going to have over there. So definitely a very effective run to kind of sprinkle in with your scheme. The other time that I'll actually utilize that same motion is with the stretch. So if I'm audibling into, like, maybe an eye close stretch and I'm just getting sick of my quarterback doing all this and I can't motion snap it that would be one reason to do this I don't know that it works quite as well as as the eye close stretch but yeah, pretty much I mean pretty much the same thing so you can motion snap this or if you just want to make it look the same you can let him get set uh, again just another nice way to mess with the user because it just one thing looks just like the other and obviously it creates a very effective run. This is another run that I like as kind of a, like a zone option. If the user's doing a good job, we really haven't talked about eye tight, but if I come into eye tight and we'll hit him with this halfback ISO. So again, you really don't predetermine where you're going to run. You can kind of watch the user and it's just typically there's going to be a few holes that open up. Uh, which is going to freeze a user, or he picks one hole, you run into the other. Now, that is a pretty common hole. Let's go and check out the replay. So, 
Obviously, a huge hole opens up over here. Another option, what you can do is you can actually slide 19 in pre-snap. And you could do that every time just to make it look the same. And then he'll do a better job of picking him up. So you can see, you know, if, if he slides in and now he blocks him to start, you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one situation out here giving you another option. Uh, the other option would have been, let's say the user flies into this gap here. Well, I could have then ran out wide and I'm just one-on-one -on -one with him in the open field with a heck of a lot of space. You know, so in this case, the way the blocking set up, you got option one and two, right? They're both going to be on this side of the field. It's just if the user takes one hole, you're going to run to the other one. One last play, and we're going to kind of get into some conceptual stuff with this. So if you have certain formations where you're set up, right? So we know close slot, I'm going to have my, my TE flanker, I'm going to be set up with all my linemen. So that formation I drop in, if I want to run, I go from there. Just so you're not so predictable, you could take weak close flex and set it up with your TE flanker as well, and maybe drop in from each and alternate that. Why I bring that up is if we're not in salary cap now and we have a quarterback and we have wide receivers, is you got to start to kind of think, what formations am I not going to be running, say, maybe backside? Well, can I keep a wide receiver in then, right? And kind of have that where I can, well, if they line up wrong, I do have a receiver out there. You know, maybe I don't have much else, but you're running back, you're full back, and now you've got a receiver that's potentially three targets in the passing game. Which, if they're in run defense, that's why you'd be doing it. They're not in pass either, they're in something that's way irresponsible. Maybe they're pressed man and you want to burn them on a go, for example, whatever it is. So maybe I strong, since that's a passing formation we like, maybe we leave all of our passing weapons in on I-Strong. Maybe on I-Form, we take and we put our O-Lineman, tight end, whoever it is, in a, on the strong side, and we leave a receiver weak side. And we drop in in I-Close when we want to be able to hedge our bets a little bit. And then again, we can always move to anything we want from there, right? So you can set up with levels of passing and running and kind of pick where you drop in. Hey, you know, I come out in my pass stuff, turns out they're in totally irresponsible pass D, so what? I can still run with my receivers. I can still access all the other plays through audibles at the line. So that's a nice little pro tip if you're not in salary cap mode as to how you really want to set this up to be as effective as possible. So that brings us to H wing. There's actually two plays that I want to talk about in here. They're going to kind of play off of each other. So stretch alert, looky, obviously in this formation, we're going to leave a receiver in backside. Uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to put linemen in strong side or, you know, have tight ends in there, how you want to play it. You're not wrong either way. It just depends how you want to utilize it. Maybe you're going to run off trail a little bit more, things like that. Uh, but then once the user starts to really prepare for that stretch and get out wide, this is an excellent power this power alert x smoke that's probably the only power play i run that has become my go-to power play if you do want to continue to dig into this stuff and how it plays with maybe this you know strong tight and all this together go check out a few months ago i dropped i think i named it uh you know uh, top 10 salary cap run scheme and you could actually take and i go through all of this one wide stuff in pretty good detail there so definitely feel free to check that out. All right, so let's talk about uh, thresholds, abilities, traits that I look for. So this is my offensive line, uh, Teron Armstead, just because of his speed. Thuny, speed. Uh, Kevin Mawai, I had him to 99. In a perfect world, you're going to want to be able to have three abilities on your center. We'll talk about why. Randall McDaniel is your right guard. Okay. Thune is your left guard. Randall McDaniel is the only good run-blocking right guard in Madden. Hot take. The only one. And since you can replace him with Thune, that's what you do. Uh, Werf's a phenomenal, has it all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have Walter Jones play an inline tight end. And then we're going to have Lane Johnson and J.J. Watt playing receiver. In single back, J.J. Watt and Joe Thomas would be playing receiver. 
and Lane Johnson and Walter Jones would then become my inline tight ends. Uh, from an ability standpoint, I want to have identifier on my center so I don't have to have it on my tackle. That's where we would want to have identifier, run block elite, which speaks for itself, and post up. Post up, obviously, when they win a dominant double team block, they get off of that block quicker and get to the second level. So twofold, you're not going to have as many runs getting blown up right up the middle. Uh, and also you'll have an opportunity to get your center out to that second level and, and hit another linebacker or safety. We know why that's a benefit. As far as identifier goes, the reason we want to have that is to quick snap someone, right, would be the first reason. You catch them on the defensive line, you know they're not ready, boom, you can snap it. The other thing is if they're actually moving from player to player to set stuff up, it can potentially give you some insight into how they're setting up their run. Deal. So in a perfect world, we would have secure protector over here instead of identifier. Secure protector is... Uh, It'll cancel out the run stuff abilities. So even just having one guy with that, let's say their run stuff guy is on your left tackle. Well, who cares? Take your left tackle, put him at right tackle, take your right tackle, now put him at left tackle, and keep him matched up in front of that guy, wherever the hell he is on the line. That would be the benefit of doing that. You know, if that person's just giving you hell, you could do that. Run Black Elite speaks for itself. The reason it shows Nasty Streak specifically against 3-4, it's excellent. Uh, in the I-Form slot, slot Blast, uh, Weak Dive, my favorite would be Strong Close Outside Zone. Uh, and the reason is, the way they're going to line up the blocking, your tackle is going to end up on an outside linebacker. Well, there you go. When people come out in, with four down line, stuff like that, that's where Nasty Streak's going to have a, a tough time being effective. But you'll just want to keep in mind, try to kind of find a way to get him matched up on a linebacker. If you can take advantage of that, that's really where you're going to have that payoff. Uh, guys, I hope this was helpful. Well, I know it was helpful, man. There's a lot of information. Thank you for sticking around to hear it all. As always, like, comment, subscribe, them boys. Check us out on Facebook, Mad Genius. Peace.